story tonight involves broken windows on a home and a truck. A family on the northwest side is shaken up after what they're calling a random act of violence. Now they're asking for whoever is responsible to come forward. We heard a very loud sound um, just seconds after my husband said, what was that? And he said, grab the three kids and take them to the room and lock the door. Jessica Lopez's husband came outside Monday to find this. Their front window and the windows to his work truck shot and broken northwest of Castle Hills. They shot through three windows in the vehicle and also hit the windshield. So, I mean, there's glass covering everything all over the car seats. That glass still piled on the street. The window to their home, Lopez, is thankful. Whatever was used didn't break through the second pane of glass. Your mind spirals because it's what if they would have, what if it would have gone through the second pane? What if it would have hit my husband sitting in the living room? She says they called police that night. SAPD is investigating this as criminal mischief. According to the police report, the holes in the windows seem to be consistent with a BB or pellet gun. Regardless, Lopez says her three young children are feeling unsettled. Just feeling safe in their house and in their neighborhood, and that's probably the hardest part is I can't fix that. As Lopez and her husband file insurance claims and clean up the shattered glass, they hope whoever's responsible thinks twice before doing this again. Was it really worth it? Right. I mean, what were you trying to get out of it and, and did you achieve that and at what cost? Another vehicle's window down the street has the same damage as Lopez's husband's truck. That's according to the same police report. Lopez is asking anyone who has video that might have caught the person responsible to come forward. New tonight, several people are in a new place to stay after their apartment was damaged by fire. The fire broke out just before 8 p.m. on Fredericksburg Road near Vance Jackson and Babcock Roads. Fire officials believe the unit that caught fire did not have anyone home at the time. The fire was contained to the first floor, but heavy smoke caused damage to an apartment above the fire on the second floor and to an adjoining unit on the first floor. The unit that caught fire sustained significant damage. Those on the second floor had to be displaced because of smoke damage. The Red Cross is assisting those families. Well, a woman is in critical condition tonight after she was thrown from her car during a rollover crash on the south side. It happened just after 9 p.m. on Southwest Loop 410, not far from Palo Alto Road and Highway 16. San Antonio police say the woman was speeding and attempted to go around a slow moving vehicle when she lost control. The car swerved into the grass median and rolled over several times, causing the woman to be ejected from the car. She was taken to the hospital and no other in vehicles were involved. Zarzamora Road is one of San Antonio's most dangerous roads, especially for people who walk along it. That's according to the city's transportation department. It's so concerning the U.S. Department of Transportation awarded San Antonio $4 million to make it safer. Pedestrians tell the night team's Camelia Juarez a safety initiative is long overdue. Honking, cars speeding by. This is what Jazzy Perez hears from drivers as she walks to the bus stop with her son. They don't notice nobody. <laughs> they just go, they'll take off. They, they're always on the rush, rush. Perez says this stretch of Zazamora Street from Cincinnati to Southwest Military is dangerous. There's a lot of accidents and people can't even cross the streets anymore. Between 2016 and 2020, there were 43 serious injuries and 13 fatalities. The Department of Transportation granted the city's pedestrian safety program, Vision Zero, with $4 million to build eight mid-block crosswalks from Cincinnati Avenue near Woodlawn Park down to Southwest Military. Director of Transportation Tamika Monterville says medians attached to the crosswalks will hopefully change drivers' behavior. You have to pay more attention because you can't look at your phone and, and drive down the street when you know there's a median there. The Safer Streets for All grant was awarded in part because the population along Zazamora has a low income and has been historically underserved. Essentially, we recognize that parts of our city are still suffering from the disparate treatment. A portion of the grant will go towards safety education for drivers and pedestrians. Acapulco barbershop owner Adrian Gonzalez says a lot of his customers are pedestrians and part of the education should go towards changing attitudes. Sometimes people don't respect the people that walk in the street. The crosswalks will have trees, foliage, and a section for pedestrians to stand. The project is set to be complete within the next two years. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. 
A Dallas man is now convicted of capital murder for three killings he did not commit. Instead, court records show his then 14 year old son as a suspect. 34 year old Richard Acosta is convicted for the 2021 shooting deaths of Xavier Gonzalez, Ivan Noyala, and Rafael Garcia. Acosta testified he did not know his son Abel has a gun or shot anyone. Abel disappeared shortly after that shooting. He has still not been found by police and is considered armed and dangerous. Prosecutors argued Acosta sought to dispose of evidence and tried to move his family. He eventually surrendered to police days after the shooting. A Houston man is charged with evading a DPS trooper after a traffic stop. The evidence? Video the suspect recorded himself and posted on YouTube for all to see. It all started when a DPS trooper pulled him over on the highway for an expired temporary tag. Here's what followed shortly after. Okay, do you have your driver's license on you? Yeah, I do. All right, and then go ahead and step out with me as well. 23-year-old uh, Alan Lynch Jr. takes off, seen weaving through cars on the interstate in his Dodge Charger. Lynch documented the whole thing, including him hiding out at an apartment complex for hours. But he was identified, located, and arrested this week, charged with felony evading. Not only does evading place the uh, community at large in danger, but it places the suspect in danger, it places the trooper in danger. And this isn't Lynch's first run with troopers. In fact, he was out on bond at the time for doing the same thing months before. Court documents say he got away after speeds reached 120 miles per hour in the interstate, almost 100 on streets. The blood donor pool could soon grow as the FDA is considering easing restrictions for the LGBTQ plus community. The proposed change would get rid of a three month abstinence requirement for bi and homosexual men. Instead, all potential donors would participate in a questionnaire that takes into account their HIV risk. On Monday, our community had an only a one day supply of, of blood. Type O blood was at less than half a day supply with only 120 units available should someone need a transfusion. Staff at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center are hopeful this change would expand our available donor pool. We welcome these changes. They're based in science and it really helps our community in the long run because that means we're going to have more blood for patients who need it. So what's next for the proposal? There will be a 60 day comment period for the public to give comments or ask any questions. From there, the FDA will take in that information and decide whether or not to make the guidance final. We have a link on ksat.com where you can ask questions or make comments to the FDA on this draft guidance. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam here tonight. A little bit more of the cloud cover starting to work its way back into the south central Texas sky after finding pretty much nothing but sunshine out there earlier today. It was a cold start. A lot of us started off below or at freezing, but all of that sunshine helped temperatures climb into the upper 50s, low 60s. We are seeing those temperatures fall pretty efficiently tonight. We're in the 30s and 40s right now. I think for most of us, we'll start off in the 30s. First thing tomorrow morning, so it will be another layering day. You'll want the jacket early tomorrow, but into the afternoon, temperatures will continue to warm into the mid to even a few upper 60s. I also do think you will notice a bit more cloud cover for the back half of the weekend's plans. So overall, cold start tomorrow, a comfortable afternoon, low humidity. That warming trend, though, is going to continue into at least the first half of next week. We do have a few fronts that move through, only isolated chances for rain associated with those, but still, we'll time it out and get you a look at your future cast coming up in a few. The chances of finding earthquake survivors in Turkey growing slim, but not impossible. See video from the most miraculous rescues where people were stuck under the rubble for more than five days. Plus, when you stop by a restaurant, would you like your roaches dead or alive? Because that's what one local business was offering. Find out who's in this week's Behind the Kitchen Door. First, the U.S. and now Canada, how the U.S. and Canada's prime minister worked together to shoot down the latest flying object in the sky. A high altitude object tracked over northern Canada has now been shot down over the Yukon by a U.S. F-22. This incident comes one day after the U.S. military shot down a different unknown high altitude object 
over the waters of Alaska. ABC's Ty Hernandez tells us how this might be connected to the Chinese spy balloon shot down last weekend. For the second time in two days, an unidentified high-altitude object has been shot down by U.S. military aircraft. The North American Aerospace Defense Command confirms its radar and aircraft tracked an unidentified high-altitude object over northern Canada. The Pentagon saying it was first detected over Alaska late Friday before crossing into Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeting, I ordered the takedown of an unidentified object that violated Canadian airspace, saying Canadian and U.S. aircraft were scrambled and a U.S. F-52 successfully fired at the object. Saturday's incident comes one day after President Biden gave the order for an F-22 fighter jet to shoot down another unidentified object flying in the skies above Alaska. That object, about the size of a small car, was flying at around 40,000 feet, posing a threat to civilian aircraft. Out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of the Pentagon, President Biden ordered the military to down the object, and they did. The Pentagon confirms the military is working with the FBI to recover what they can of the object, but Arctic conditions are making that operation treacherous. President Biden has faced some criticism for not acting sooner to shoot down a Chinese spy balloon that appeared over the western United States nearly two weeks ago. That balloon eventually shot down off the coast of South Carolina on February 4th after traveling across the country. The Defense Department advising the president to wait until it was over water to avoid hurting anyone on the ground. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski says Friday's action by the administration sends a better message. Any aspect of U.S. sovereign territory that is, is encroached upon, there's going to be consequences to it. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Okay, so today felt pretty good temperature-wise, but yes. outside when you step out, the wind was brutal. Whipped you right in the face. It did. Yeah. It, was, it was kind of miserable, Mia. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> breezy out there. Thankfully, you're right. Yes, the sunshine helped. It was very comfortable out there in terms of the temperatures. But yes, it was breezy in spots. Good thing is, though, winds are calming tonight. And I think tomorrow, wind won't be as much of a factor. Let's take a look at some of the peak wind gusts that we saw across portions of south central Texas throughout the day. Today, San Antonio International clocking in a peak wind gust of 32 miles per hour, 31 miles per hour over in Hondo, 21 miles per hour in Kerrville, New Braunfels peak wind gust for the day, upwards of about 30 miles per hour. Again, we are really calming things down in and around the San Antonio area tonight. Calming winds will help those temperatures continue to fall through the overnight hours. So again, we are going to wake up to the 30s across a good portion of the region, especially in rural areas in and around San Antonio and then isolated spots up in the hill country. I think it's possible that once again, we briefly dip down to or just below that freezing mark right before the sun comes up. But for now here in town, mid thirties is where I think we're going to start off our Sunday. So still plenty cold. If you are planning on stepping out early tomorrow morning, you definitely will want to bundle up. But as we head into the afternoon, temperatures will warm pretty comfortable out there. All things considered, we're climbing into the mid to upper sixties for those daytime highs across South Central Texas. Something else I do think you will notice tomorrow compared to the full blown out sunshine that we saw today. A bit more cloud cover moves in to wrap up the weekend. That cloud cover sticks with us into Monday. Maybe an isolated stray shower there. Vast majority of us do look to sit on the drier side and then into Monday night. We are still expecting that weak front to push into South Central Texas, but unfortunately rain chance Chances, at least with the data that we've seen today, not looking as good as we may have hoped. So we can time out that setup. There's an area of low pressure still well off to our east here tonight, sparking some widespread rain and storm activity across the deep south. For us here in the Lone Star State, high pressure in control. That's going to continue scooting eastward, though, as we head into the second half of the weekend. Our focus is on this low pressure system that is off the west coast. That is essentially going to track eastward here over the next couple of days. By tomorrow night, it's approaching the desert southwest, and then it's going to take more of a northeastward track. There's that cloud cover that we are expecting into Monday. As that low pressure system pushes 
moves across far northern Texas. It will drop that boundary into south central Texas into the pre dawn hours of our Tuesday. Notice here though the rain chances not widespread, not great. Maybe a few isolated showers here in Bear County. Better chances of finding some of that rain across our far eastern counties as we head into the early morning hours of our Tuesday, but then mostly sunny skies return for any Valentine's Day plans that you may have. Do know that it will be pretty windy out there though with some wind gusts generally upwards of 30 to maybe even 35 miles per hour at times. That boundary that moves in though, notice it's not really going to have any effect on our temperatures. In fact, we're still expected to warm into Tuesday, starting off in the mid 50s, highs headed for the mid 70s. On Wednesday, we could see unseasonably warm temperatures continue. We're nearing 80 degrees for those daytime highs, but then that second front moves in into late week. That one will pack more of a punch with our temperatures, waking up to some cold mornings in the 30s and highs in the upper 50s and low 60s, guys. I cannot wait until Wednesday, 80 degrees. Looking forward to it, Mia. We did that just for you, Lee. Girl, just you for got you. me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> All right, Andrew, we know our Spurs playing an old friend tonight. Yeah, DeJounte Murray was traded to the Hawks this last offseason. Guess what? This is the first time they're going to see him in red and white. When we come back, we'll see how the Spurs did trying to snap an 11 game losing streak, plus a thriller in girls basketball and Antonian this afternoon. Got the highlights from that one, too. Next. Jeremy Sohan returns to the Spurs lineup tonight as they take on their old friend DeJounte Murray and the Hawks in Atlanta. And the rookie contributes right away with a straightaway three ball. Great start for the Spurs. They lead 7-2. to two. Later in the quarter, Keldon Johnson strikes with a layup. He's back in the lineup as San Antonio trails by one. Then final seconds of the frame, Gorgie Jang comes up with the rebound, gets it ahead to Sohan, and he races down the floor for the one-handed jam with two seconds left. Spurs still trail, though, 32-31 after one. Second quarter, Spurs surge into the lead. Malachi Branham knocks down the three ball, capping a 10-2 run and forcing a Hawks timeout. It's 43-37 San Antonio. But the Hawks rally, and in the final seconds of the half, Trey Young knocks down the pull-up jumper. Spurs still trail 61-60 at the break. Third quarter, DeJounte Murray comes alive. First, he knocks down a three to give Atlanta a 10-point lead, 78-68. And then a few possessions later, he drives inside for the tough layup. DJ finished with 18 points tonight. All five Hawks starters finish in double figures, and the streak is now 12. Spurs lose again 125-106, but head coach Greg Popovich felt really good about the progress his young guys showed tonight. I can see it, you know, I can see it in Trey, I can see it in Jeremy, Kellen's off the charts, Zach's off the charts, uh, Kate is getting better and better confidence-wise, uh, it's good, Malachi is uh, far out exceeded where we thought he'd be at this point, so I'm thrilled with all of them. Next up, the Spurs hit the road to take on Cleveland Monday night at 6 p.m. Texas men's basketball team returned home looking for a bounce back win against West Virginia and the Longhorns pulled away late in the first half. Off the turnover, Timmy Allen finishes with the layup, 38-23 Texas. And then in the final seconds of the half, Arterio Morris comes up with another steal and finds Sir Jabari Rice for the slam with three seconds left. Longhorns head into the locker room with a 51-30 lead and they cruise to a big win, 94-60. Number 14, Baylor traveled to number 17, TCU for a top 25 showdown and Adam Flash Flagler put on a show in crunch time. First, his three-point gives the Bears a 61-58 lead with four minutes to play. Then he gets a floater to fall high off glass. Flagler finished with a game-high 28 points, and Baylor knocks off the Horn Frogs 72-68. In girls high school basketball, Antonian already had the district title wrapped up, but they had a tough test this afternoon against St. Agnes. Picked this one up in the third quarter. Suheili Mermea comes up with the steal and tanks at the length of the court for the basket. Both teams are now tied at 37 heading into the fourth quarter. That's when the Apaches take control. Ariana Davis spins and flips it up and in. Count it and one. She'd hit the free throw, so both teams still tied up now at 45 all with under 10 seconds to play. Final possession, Ella Neitz loses her defender and puts it up and in with one second left to give the Apaches a late lead. One last heave was intercepted and Antonian wins their regular season finale in dramatic fashion, 47-45.
I saw the clock running down, obviously. I wanted to get the last shot, and um, Ari opened up a lane for me, so I took it, and then I kind of did like a little move, and the girl was on the floor, so I just shot it and trusted in my, my skills to make it, I guess. And we lost to them last time, so we really had a fire to win this one. The Apaches finished with a 29-8 overall record, 11-1 in TAP 6A District 2. In boys hoops today, District 29-6A, Jay honoring their seniors before taking on TAP to Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. Raiders start strong in this one. Marcus Williams knocks down a three from the wing, part of an 8-2 run right out of the gates. But the Mustangs battle back, pushing the pace here. Senior Jalen Knight and goes up strong and gets it to fall. Count it plus the foul. That makes it a five-point game, but the Raiders answer back. Roman Flores the steal over to J.D. Riojas and a Head to Kevin Piedra for the basket. Taft goes on to win it, 71 to 60. Coming up later in sports, local wrestlers look to claim regional titles and punch their tickets to next week's state tournament. It is finally state tournament season. Got a lot on the slate next week. Got a lot of excitement there. Thanks, Andrew. You got it. All right, dead pests, rodent droppings, and live roaches, each leading to low health scores clearly at three different restaurants. Find out who's in this week's Behind the Kitchen Door. Rescue crews are not giving up as the death toll from the earthquake in Turkey rises. See the damage left behind and how nations across the globe are helping. More than 28,000 people are now confirmed dead after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked southeastern Turkey and northwestern Syria early Monday. Yeah, millions of others are now homeless and both countries are facing a looming humanitarian crisis. Here's ABC's Lama Hassan with how the rescue efforts are finding some success despite diminishing chances of survival. Six days after a devastating earthquake struck Turkey and Syria, the chances of finding more survivors is growing slim. But moments like these help keep hope alive for those searching for victims. A 19-year-old woman rescued after being buried under the rubble of a collapsed building for 128 hours. And this seven-year-old girl found alive after nearly 136 hours. ABC's David Muir was there as search teams frantically dig through the debris. You can see they're now handing pieces of concrete to each other, forming a human chain uh, to try to get to anyone who might be beneath this uh, more quickly. This, this is life here, calling for silence. Helicopters bringing the wounded from the disaster zone to the region's largest hospital. These helicopter rescue missions are now going on around the clock. More than 700 patients rescued just in this hospital alone. The UN's emergency relief coordinator says he expects the death toll to continue to rise. And I think it's really difficult to, to, to estimate, uh, obviously very precisely, because we, you need to get under the rubble. Um, but I, I'm sure it'll double or more. And that's... That's terrifying. For so many across Turkey and Syria, even though they've survived the quake, they no longer have a home to return to. Entire neighborhoods destroyed. Homes and buildings now just mountains of debris. The powerful quake changing the landscape in some areas, splitting this olive grove in two, creating a 200 meter wide fissure. The newly created canyon is 30 meters deep. Lama Hassan, ABC News, London. An American Airlines jet collides with a shuttle bus, resulting in five people hurt. This happened at the Los Angeles International Airport last night. An airport official says the plane was being towed from a gate to a parking lot on a taxiway when it ran into the bus. The plane did not have passengers on board, but the bus did. Four people were taken to a nearby hospital, while a fifth person injured declined to be transported. Five other people were treated at the scene. The cause of this collision is still under investigation. Well, an update is in. Suicide rates in the U.S. have increased in 2021 after two years of decline. That's according to a new CDC analysis. The data shows there were 14.1 suicides for every 100,000 people. When broken down by ethnic groups, though, there were significant increases in suicides among Native Americans, Black Americans, and Hispanic Americans. When it came to white Americans, the suicide rate had actually declined. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, you can reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by calling or texting 988. We're learning more about the new disclosure from former President Trump's team on classified documents found at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Sources say Trump's legal team was searching through additional boxes in mid-January amid the Justice Department's 
ongoing efforts to verify the former president no longer has any classified records in his possession. Trump's team then provided agents an additional folder with classified markings, as well as a laptop that belonged to a current Trump aide, which had electronic copies of some classified papers. This comes after Friday's search of former Vice President Mike Pence's Indiana home, where another classified document, as well as six other pages of records, were found. Well, recent health inspections of local restaurants uncovered all kinds of violations that might make your stomach churn. So get ready from rodent droppings to roaches to bottles of hazardous chemicals that have no business being in restaurants. The night team's Tim Gerber shows us what he found behind the kitchen door this week. Little Caesars, located in the 2700 block of Military Drive, earned a 79 on their January inspection. Several items in the cooler were too warm. Chemical bottles were found in different areas, including a bottle of vehicle engine coolant. There was no hot water at any of the sinks. The water heater needed to be fixed. There was food debris in the oven, on the floor, and unspecified dead pests in the kitchen. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> La Centro Americana restaurant in the 1200 block of 24th Street got an 81. Tacos in a refrigerator were temped at 91 degrees. That's too warm. They should be cooled to 70 degrees prior to storage. An employee was seen using the hand sink to wash a tablecloth. There was a container of shredded cabbage on the floor near a sink, and rodent droppings were found on the floor. The business told to close up holes and eliminate food sources. The inspector confirmed the business is using pest control services, but recommended more treatments. 11 violations were corrected on site. China Harbor Buffet in the 17,000 block of Highway 281 got an 85. There were unspecified live pests in the dry storage area. The walls of the walk-in coolers were soiled and full of food debris. There was an accumulation of grime and grease on the vent hoods and filters. The frying equipment was coated in more grime. Many surfaces needed to be cleaned. They also needed to do a better job of properly storing raw meats to avoid contamination. <laughs> Tip Top Cafe in the 2800 block of Fredericksburg Road earned an 86. The inside of the microwave needed to be cleaned. So did the floor mats that were filled with food debris. The inspector found dead roaches in the building while live roaches were seen walking around the hand washing area and the cold hold units. The business was told to cover all items when not in use, including a butter container found on a shelf with no lid. Eight violations were corrected during the inspection. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Bon Appetit, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. For some, they're the star of the show. No, we are not talking about Rihanna, but instead the Super Bowl ads. How much companies spent this year and what we can expect to see. And with every major event comes a major increase in security. How officials plan to keep fans and players protected tomorrow. Well, it is the eve before the big game in Glendale, Arizona, where the game will be played at State Farm Stadium. Security is on high alert, both on the ground and in the skies. There's a temporary flight restriction around the stadium, so security can have a bird's eye view. Surrounding areas will also be filled with customs and border protection, air and marine operation. Game security has access to more than 1700 cameras with 800 of them placed around the stadium itself. For more than 40 federal, state, local and tribal law enforcement agencies have been planning for this for the last 18 months. It's that time of year again, the one big television event we don't want to skip through the commercials. Companies are rolling out their Super Bowl ads and with viewership likely to be over 100 million, advertisers can make big gains by catching eyes during the big game. But with a 30 second spot going for seven million dollars, Running an ad can also be a big gamble. If early previews are any indication, the big feature in this year's ads, celebrities. Experts say the most impactful ads, however, don't have to be star-studded. And the key to success is creating a conversation. I'm not going to lie. 
The commercials are one of my favorite parts of the yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, of course. They just get so clever with everything. <laughs> Very clever. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's take a look outside again with live cam here tonight. Again, things pretty calm but chilly in the Alamo City. We've already seen those temperatures fall into the 40s here in Bear County. Low humidity today made for a comfortable feel, but also a wide temperature spread. 32 is the official low over at SA International, a high of 62, which actually was below average for this time of year. 66 in Hondo was the high today, 69 in Catula, 65 over in Pleasanton. Again, we are chilly out there right now, even colder by wake up time tomorrow as we drop into the 30s. But a warming trend takes us into next week. We'll have another full look at that coming up in a few. All right, so we've had the cold, we've had the wind, mm -hmm. and now we're warming up just in time for Valentine's there Day. There we go. That is the exact trend that we're going Thank to you. find over the next <laughs> several days. Yeah, highs approaching 80 by the middle of next week. Lee's over there cheering. She's very excited. But then we've got another front that's going to come in, and that's going to try and cool us down by the end of next week. Speaking of the cold, though, let's take a look at those morning lows across South Central Texas, what we woke up to earlier this morning really most of us were able to fall to or below that 32 degree mark. 32 officially here in town, 25 up in Kerrville this morning, 26 in Hondo, 31 in Uvalde. We woke up to 32 degrees over in Carrizo Springs. Now as we head into the overnight hours, I do think the bulk of us will once again fall into the 30s by wake up time tomorrow morning here in San Antonio, mid 30s, but especially in rural spots and then isolated spots up into the hill country. Another light freeze certainly possible briefly before the sun comes up, but then afternoon highs are headed for the mid to upper 60s. So already a little bit warmer than what we saw out there earlier this afternoon. That warming trend will continue into the first half of next week. We've got a couple of different fronts that move in, but at least as of right now, just looks like we're going to find isolated chances for rain with that, but we'll continue to keep eyes on it again. We'll start off in the mid 30s, more cloud cover in store throughout the day tomorrow. Daytime highs headed for about 66 officially here in San Antonio tomorrow afternoon. 63 in Bolverde, 64 in Canyon Lake, as well as stretching over to Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort. I think the farther south that you go, that's where we could find some slightly warmer temperatures, upper 60s for places like Poteet, Pleasanton, and stretching over to Floresville out in Wilson County. There's that warming trend that takes us into the first half of next week. Monday, we're near 70 degrees. Valentine's Day approaching 75 and will continue to warm to about 80 by the middle of next week before we see that next front move in and then unseasonably cool temperatures return. For context, our average high for this time of year is about 67 degrees. Now with that first boundary that's going to move in overnight Monday and into early Tuesday, that's where we could find a few isolated showers. That all thanks to this low pressure system out near California. Timing that out again here on your future cast tomorrow evening. There's more of the cloud cover that we'll find for the back half of the weekend compared to what we saw out there earlier today. Cloud cover sticks with us into Monday and maybe an isolated shower. Very stray there as well. And then into the early morning hours of our Tuesday, we see that boundary move in for places like New Braunfels, San Marcos, Gonzales, stretching over into our far eastern counties, Hallettsville, Shiner, down to Cuero and DeWitt County. County, better chances of finding some of that rain before it scoots east and then into Tuesday afternoon. We'll see more sunshine return for the remainder of our Valentine's Day. Again, it will be pretty windy out there as well. In terms of rainfall totals, likely not going to be great. They're not going to be for everybody, but thankfully, you know, so far starting off this month, we have seen some decent rain over an inch officially here in San Antonio. So we'll see what we can find again. That second front will move in overnight Wednesday, early Thursday. A couple more isolated showers to a stray rumble, not completely out of the question there. And then we'll see those cooler than average temperatures return by late week. Plenty cold in the mornings, waking up to the 30s and then highs in the upper 50s and low 60s, guys. Sounds like those who need the jacket all day, Mia. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Andrew, we know that it's finally time to talk about the UIL Wrestling Championship. Yeah, that's right. And it's usually a big deal when someone wins a regional title. Imagine winning that with a teammate. How about your twin brother? When we come back, we'll talk about a, play, a pair of Clemens twins who both won regional titles today. Plus, Mario Barrios is back in the ring, and he put on a show in the Alamo Dome tonight. Got that too next.
Marissa, next week's UIL State Tournament. We're on the line this afternoon at Littleton Gym for the Region 4 6A Wrestling Championships. And we begin our coverage on the boys' side with 144-pound bracket. Clemens senior Seth Gutierrez was taking on Reagan's Jimmy Benny for the title. Gutierrez trailed entering the third period, but he's protecting a 5-4 lead late in regulation. And with the match tied in the balance, he notches a takedown right as the buzzer sounds. Gutierrez is your regional champ with a 7-4 decision. I knew I just had to work for my attacks and my scores. I was nervous, but I knew if I worked what I knew what I had to do, if I worked what I knew, I would get it and make no mistakes. So all this work that I've been doing all week, you know, my coaches, my family, they've all been supporting me, so I knew I had I could go and do it. Guess what? Very next match at 150 pounds, his twin brother Tyler put on a clinic against Hutto's Reese Frausto. Tyler wins by a 10-5 decision thanks in part to a key reversal. And guess what? He flexes to the crowd afterwards. Both brothers are heading to state as regional champs. I knew I couldn't let him win and I lose, so I had, to, I had to get that W. It just means so much. We put in so much time and effort, and it just it means so much, so much to my whole team, all my coaches. It's just all my family. Like, thank you so much. New Braunfels senior Landon Marsh is a defending state champ, and he took charge of his match right from the jump. Even with an apparent knee injury suffered during the second period, Marsh still won his match against Dripping Springs' Ben Lawrence via pin, meaning he's a four-time regional champ. I mean, it feels pretty good. I'm the first person out of my school to become a four-timer, so that's something pretty big for our program. Just got to make sure I'm healthy and conditioned and ready to go when the time comes, so excited for it. Last but not least, at 215 pounds, great battle between Roosevelt's Roman Salazar and Reagan's Sawyer Peavy with a, tied mat, with a match tied at one late in the third period. Salazar scores the decisive takedown, and he wins the regional title for the second straight year via 3-1 decision. It's hard, but I finally get the front headlock to the cradle. Couldn't lock it up, but get behind. Got my two and won it. I mean, it means a lot, especially because it's my senior year. So I really wanted to go back and prove that it was just a one-time thing. Here's a look at the girls' champions from this evening. Churchill's Audrey Brown won the 132-pound title. San Marcos's Anissa Moreno won the 145-pound bracket. And Steele's Mariana Williams is your 165-pound champion. The state tournament begins next Friday in Cyprus. San Antonio's own Mario Barrios put on a show for his city tonight in the Alamo Dome against Giovanni Santiago. Barrios connected with a vicious right in the seventh round and poured it on with body shots in the eighth round, finally dropping Santiago to his knees. Eventually, the fight would be stopped, earning Barrios a TKO victory, snapping his two-match losing streak. We'll have reaction from Barrios tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. and on Instant Replay. Finally, let's head on down to the Stock Show and Rodeo this evening for some bull riding. And this is the first round for the second bracket. Connor Murnian barely gets his name called before he's chucked off by Skim Walker. Bull wanted nothing to do with him. But the ride of the night came from J.B. Monty on top of Bonfire. And Monty was on fire. He goes the full eight seconds, even through a change of direction. He gets chucked off right near the fence that he'd be okay. That's a 90-point ride, one of the highest scoring rides of the competition so far. Great day of bull riding. Can't wait to continue it all through next week. You could have done that. That was, no. I mean, no. wild to watch. We, we, we need to get Lee on one and see what happens. I, I was just, I was trying to do the boxing earlier. That was, <laughs> whew, what is fun, but now. We're going we're gonna to leave it to the pros. Okay, yeah, guys? definitely. <laughs> we'll be right back before somebody gets hurt. <laughs> All right, tomorrow starts off cold in the 30s here in San Antonio. More cloud cover throughout the day. Highs in the mid to upper 60s. Even warmer throughout the first half of next week. We'll monitor for those few isolated chances for rain and then some cooler air to round out next week, guys. All right, Mia, thank you. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for being with us. Be sure to catch Good Morning San Antonio starting at 6. Have a great night.